Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Scrap Mechanic Survival Nomad Edition. And today, the side quest is to get ourselves a dress bot and make it a deployable dressing station that will, um, I'm, I'm planning on having it, oh no. These saw blades, I realized, just kind of, they get in the way of this whole plan I had. But, I'll figure it out. We may have to do some modifications, which is perfectly fine, but uh, the plan is to make a deployable dressing station. So we can park, we can hop out of our vehicle, we can change our clothes, which it would kind of make more sense to change our clothes inside of our vehicle, wouldn't it? But things are just so much cooler when they're deployable, okay? So we're gonna make a deployable dress bot. Before we go there, uh, I do have to address something. In the last episode, I, I did something inexcusable. I, I kind of abandoned Wedge Gang. In my, in my quest for these large wedges to put on the spoiler here, which looks awesome by the way, the wedges make it look so much more professional. Just, just throwing that out there. But in the quest for the large wedges, I totally passed up an opportunity to get some small wedges, which you may remember. Let's roll the clip. <gasps> wedges. I want the wedges. I know I could get these wedges if I hammer them all the way out with me, but honestly, I don't have the patience for that. And I don't know what I was thinking at the time, but it was inexcusable. I abandoned Wedge Gang and there's there's just no excuse for it. So I, I have to, this is my apology video. I have to apologize for abandoning Wedge Gang like that. Those wedges were just left alone. They were practically crying for help, crying to be saved from the warehouse, from the tape bots. And although I did destroy the tape bots, I left the wedges behind. And what kind of wedge gang leaves their own wedges behind? So I have returned to the warehouse. And to make up for what I've done, I am going to re-enter the warehouse, get those wedges, bring them home, and we are gonna have our first ever one by one wedges in survival mode. Now, I am not gonna go through each floor of the warehouse like I already did. Those wedges were near the top elevator, if I remember correctly. So I'm actually going to do a toilet ascent up the side of this warehouse to the top, enter through the top elevator, retrieve the wedges, and do a toilet dive back off of the top down to our vehicle. At least that's the plan. So for this, I'm gonna need two toilets on me. Let's start off on this pipe right here. So this is the method. We go up with one toilet. Oh, okay, this is already going back. <laughs> Great start, Scrapman. All right, just one toilet at a time, making my way up to the top of the warehouse. All right, we've made it past the first floor. Anything interesting up here? Not particularly. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go for this thing right here. All right, now I'm walking up the side of the second pipe. Getting up to the top of the second floor. This is so much faster than going all the way through the warehouse. Is there no easy way to get around this lip? Ah, uh, yes, this will do it. This will do it right here. May wow, this is risky. This is gonna be so risky. What about the inside? All right, this might be the way. Ah, uh, whoa. This is not very easy, but I th think, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to reach the toilet from here. Please don't fall. Yes, I can reach the toilet. Okay. We're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. This is actually more challenging than I thought it was going to be. Get that toilet and we're almost at the top. And there it is. We made it. We toileted our way up here. And this is why you should never leave home without a toilet. <laughs> All right, let's go down to the third floor. Oh, did I just crash my game? Oh, no, there we go. All right, we're making our way down to the third floor, and we should be able to extract the wedges in no time. This is an extraction mission. There shouldn't be any more tape bots around here. Look, here they are, right there. They were literally right next to the elevator. Well, you have to cooperate if you want to be saved. Go that way. Wait, can I just put them on my lift? No, I can't even use my lift. Okay. I hope this works. I've never actually taken anything out of the warehouse before. I'm just going based on, I'm just trusting the comments that this is the thing that can happen. All right, can you just, can you just cooperate? I'm trying to save your life. Wedge gang. Okay, back up to the top. So the, 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 the rumor is that if you get it out of the elevator, you can then pick up the pieces as if they're buildable pieces. All right, we're officially on the roof now. 
Oh, look, I can pick them up on the lifts. Can I pick them up? Oh, yes, look at that. There we go. So now we have, oh, they take up one s slot per wedge. That's, uh, that's not very efficient. But we've got our first four wedges ever in survival mode. So let's get back down to our vehicle, which is down here. And what are we gonna do with them? There's only four wedges. They're hardly even gonna be noticeable on our creation. Woo! Nailed it as usual. All right, here we go. Four wedges. Where do we put them? Like, I could try to use them to make the front up here. Like, does that even, does that do anything? Maybe right there too. Just adding them to the front, just reducing the blockiness of that curve on the, uh, the front windshield there. I'm gonna go with that, and they're proudly displayed on the front of our vehicle too, so I think it looks good. All right, so now we gotta get to a mechanic station and see if we have the materials necessary to craft a dressed bot. But, uh, I'm gonna remove these. These kind of, they don't look that great, and they were originally there to protect the front wheels, but now the front wheels have these awesome drills on them, so they no longer need that protection. And that way, the, uh, bots are gonna be less afraid of the front of my vehicle anyway. Which I wanna ram them with, so I don't want them to be afraid of that. I might need to remove these for the dress bot, but we'll find out when we get to that. All right, so we need to get ourselves to a mechanic station. I wish it told us how far this one was, because this one, it tells you how far they are. But I guess I do have the trader marked, and he's 2,000 meters. He's close to the first mechanic station, so this mechanic station, I think, is closer. Only, uh, 1,400 meters. So let's get over there. Time for a travel time lapse. And here we are, just in time for sunset. Can we, we probably, we're definitely not gonna be able to fit through here, are we? Nope, and it, well, I mean, the spoiler wouldn't fit through anyway, but <laughs> definitely not the beacon. All right, let's see, do we have the materials necessary for a dress bot? A dress bot requires <gasps> 50 metal block three? 10 component kits, I just got enough for that from the warehouse run, and 10 circuit boards, which I'm pretty sure I have. 50 tier three metal. Oh, there is a hay bot over here. I thought I heard a hay bot. Excuse me, I need your spine, I need metal. Thank you. Go ahead and put that in there. All right, let's see, what do we have for tier three metal? Oh, <gasps> I have a lot of tier three metal, wow. Okay, so now I just need 10 component kits and 10 circuit boards. Where's the component kits at? There's 10 component kits. All right, now I have everything. Just like that. Don't even have to do any mining. All right, give dress bot, please. There we go. Dress bot being crap. I can't believe we're adding a dress bot to a mobile base. Like of all the unnecessary things, putting a dress bot on this. But the good thing is it should even out the weight a little bit because I have, I have the craft bot all the way over on this side. The dress bot's going to be on this side. So it should, uh, it should work out, I hope. All right, now here we go, our fancy dress bot. Let's see, uh, what does it take up as far as space goes? So if it's gonna be on the inside here, we can put it right there. That definitely doesn't give us a, a lot of room to work with on the inside, at least. <laughs> yeah, look at that, this is terrible. This is actually kind of terrible. I mean, I can kind of have like a rear view, like, ugh. I don't think there's a better spot to put it, to be honest, unless it was like in the middle, like this. That's okay, but yeah, this is why it's gonna be a deployable dress bot because it's just too cramped in here to have a uh, actual dress bot space. Or what if I, hold on, what if I put it like, like this? You know what, that's actually not so bad. Let's get out of the bush. And you know what, as far as an interior dress space, this actually isn't bad. So I might actually have to take that into consideration when it comes to figuring out uh, where, how I want the dress bot to deploy. It'd be nice if on the inside it was resting here and then we had the option to deploy it outside. All right, so I gotta figure out how this is even gonna work and oh no, I can't build on the top of this. That kind of destroys my entire plan. I was planning on attaching it by the top and having it be like lowered down from the top. That would have been so much more convenient, but now it looks like the only way to attach this is on the bottom. Yeah, it seems like the bottom is the only attachment point. Okay, so that definitely limits us for sure. So let's see how what much of a space this is gonna take up then. So keep in mind, after I get this thing installed, we're actually gonna be using it to open some epic garment boxes. All right, so it looks like these are the dimensions, except the front. Takes a little bit more. 
Yep, there we go. All right, so these are the dimensions. And I'm actually starting to get an idea here of how I can make this. Ooh, this could work maybe perfectly. All right, so I'm going to have to carve a hole out here. I'm probably going to have to get some more paint. How much paint do I have? Four paint. Yeah, I'm going to have to grab some more paint to replace this probably. But I get ideas. I'm just going to have to do some engineering. You know what? And I'm deleting these. I'm going to put drills on the back wheels instead of those saw blades. I'm going to craft some more drills. Do I even have enough to craft some more drills? Oh, I don't think I'm going to have enough. I need to make some more metal. All right, hopefully I'll be able to make enough metal for this. All right, so I've started the basic functionality and I've run into a major issue. And that issue is a dress bot is really heavy. Because right now, um, I got two pistons. There's a piston that's going to extend it out from the uh, vehicle. And there's a piston that's going to extend it down towards the ground. Right now, however, I don't have the piston activate that is supposed to extend towards the ground. And yet, this is what happens. So as this thing extends out, you can see the piston is extending it nice and gently down towards the ground. However, this piston is trying not to move right now. It is so heavy that gravity just pulls it down despite the piston not wanting to go down right now. So that means that it can't pull it back up because that's what it's trying to do. The piston is just not strong enough to uh, carry this dress bot, unfortunately. So I'm gonna try to rework this and see if I can make it uh, work better. All right, so the only solution I can think of is hopefully adding another piston that is responsible for lifting this. Hopefully that is going to uh, be sufficient to be able to handle the weight of this dress bot. All right, here comes the moment of truth. Extend this out and oh no. No, it's not enough. It might not be possible to make a deployable dress bot unless I have four or like three or four pistons. All right, I'm definitely gonna run out of component kits again, but I have another maximum strength piston. Maybe three can be enough. So in order for this to work, I gotta fit the piston in right there. And let's just see if it can hold it now. All right, it comes out and please, please, please. No, because there's no way for this to go back in now. Because now if I press the button to bring it back in, it's just, it's just completely stuck. Unless I were to put the piston on this side instead, the one that is actually closer to the uh, RV. All right, let's see how this feels now. Now, see, if it drops down like that, this isn't gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna go back inside. Uh, I, I'm kind of, I don't know if I can solve this problem. I don't know if this, this has a solution or not yet. Like, see, without the dress bot there, it's fine. It can go in and out almost no problem if the measurements were all correct and the timing was correct. Much easier that way. Like you can see the way it's supposed to go. You know what? Maybe there's a simpler solution. Maybe the dress bot doesn't have to go down to the ground. Yeah, I think I was over-engineering this. I think there is a better way to do this, potentially. All right, well, I wasted a bunch of component kits on a piston, unfortunately, because I kind of need those component kits for other stuff. But I have a new plan. We're going to under-engineer it instead. All right, I got to measure out the dress bot again. Please tell me you are odd width. You better be odd width. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dang it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course you're gonna make it difficult on me here. All right, so what I was hoping to do instead was to just have it rotate from facing inside to facing outside. Hey, you know what? This plan might still actually work. It's starting to come together. It is starting to come together. I think I have a method that can work. All right, so the idea is that the dress bot's in there, but when you press the button, it'll just turn out and become the side of the uh, of the RV. So then the issue is there has to be a wall here, of course, when it's not on the outside. So how do we get rid of the wall to make room for the dress bot to expand out? And I think a perfect way to do it is to just have it on a bearing like this, and then it comes out kind of like an awning. So if we hook this up to the same, uh, oh, we need to upgrade this. Max connection is reached. All right, I have just enough to upgrade it. Hopefully we're not gonna need any more component kits. So then this will open by a little bit more than 90 degrees, I think might look better. All right, so now it opens like that, which I think looks kind of nice. It looks all right. And it closes 
like that. And is it worth it to still have like, I mean, obviously I think I got to get rid of that strand of glass there, but do you think it's worth it to still have some kind of window in here like that maybe? So then as it opens up, there we go. That doesn't look too bad. And then when we look at our clothes, it just shows us right down here. It's like we have all the open space wherever we park. Okay, can I paint this back up? There's that, and there is that, and then we can unpaint the glass. All right, and then I will paint the dress bot black. And now I have exactly zero paint left. All right, I think I do want another switch and a logic gate because this is something that I don't think is going to be an automatic deployable thing like the rest of my vehicle is. I think I want the choice on whether I want to get dressed inside or head on out and get dressed outside like this. So I think having this button on the outside is good, but then what if I go inside? I mean, I guess I, I could still technically get dressed from behind the dress bot like that, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? So I think I should have another button. I need to craft another button and another logic gate. I can't craft another logic gate. Can I craft a button? I can craft a button. But well, this button will go on the inside right there, so we should be able to open and close it from the inside if we wanted to, just in case we cannot reach this button. But I need a logic gate in order to do that. Wait, do I have an extra logic gate hanging out somewhere? Uh, does not appear so. All right then, let's get ourselves materials needed for a logic gate. And I'm also going, oh no, is this thing too laggy? Uh oh, I have a lot more lag right now than I normally have. I'm down to 18 frames. I'm afraid that the dress bot system might actually be unusable as far as frames goes. Well, I mean, it's usable, but like at what cost? At what cost? It's so cool though. Oh, there's some water right here. That's actually not that far away. Oh man, look at these frames. I do not want to be dealing with these frames whenever I drive. And I think it is the dress bot. I'm at 18 frames right now. So if I open up the dress bot, does that change it at all? No, it does not. Wait, what if I get rid of that? Is that, oh, that, that brought back 20, that gave me an extra 20 frames just deleting that. So it definitely is, so this definitely is an issue with the contact with the rest of the vehicle. But unfortunately it does seem like we're starting to reach the complexity limit for me mechanical moving parts on the Hank tank. I don't know if the dress bot is gonna be worth having this right now. Whoops, aw, oh, dang it. Oh, I just accidentally deleted the thing. I can't even repaint it, Oh man. All right, I got two flowers and that gave me just enough to make one more stack of paint. All right, let me get a couple of glue clams in the meantime. Here, let's put this on a lift so it doesn't slide into the ocean. And uh, also I get my frames back. Let me at least do what I wanted to do. And then uh, I'll leave it up to you guys. We'll see what the performance looks like after I've finalized uh, this whole concept. And then we can decide do we keep the deployable dress bot the way it is, or do we simplify it down to a static dress bot that is just gonna be inside the back of our vehicle like uh, like it is by default? Because having it just static on the inside, unmoving, will not have a negative impact on frames at all, and we still get to have a dress bot in our vehicle. We just don't get to have the cool deployable factor. All right, that should be enough clams to get us the glue we need. All right, we got the logic gate crafting. So what this logic gate is gonna allow me to do is use two switches for one control, and they're just gonna basically basically toggle what happens to this dress bot here. All right, so I'm just gonna slap this logic gate underneath the dress bot. So by setting it to an XOR gate, I'm pretty sure I should be able to do what I want it to do. All right, so the XOR gate goes to the controller and then both switches go into the XOR gate. So now if I hit this, it should open. No problem. And then if I'm out here and I wanna close it, if I hit that, it should close. Should open up basically if either one of these switches gets hit from either side, then uh, it, it, it'll just change conditions, open or close. So here's one thing I'm curious about. I don't think I'm gonna be able to put these symmetrically, so I might not do this, but I was wondering if I put one there and one there, I think this one's gonna collide with the dress bot as it, uh, as it closes. But here, hold on a second. Eh. I'm gonna have to put that switch, I'm gonna have to attach that switch to my seat in case I forget to close it when I get in the driver's seat. All right, let's attach that one to the seat. And now let's see if I close it. What happens here? That is, dang, dang it. It collides and it's just that one too, isn't it? 
Yep, the other one is no problem. I just thought it'd be nice to have some lighting for the dress area like that, but uh, I don't think there's a convenient way to have it fold back in. Unless I built the lighting out of regular lights. All right, let's see, I'll put one right there and one right there. And at one part of my max, I'll put them on like six. And where's my paint tool? How much paint do I have left? Three paint, that's enough. There and there, and these will also be hooked up to the logic gate. So that way, when this closes, the lights will turn off. And that looks fine. And then when we open it, it's a little bit weird on the opening, the lights will turn on. Okay, DressBot has been installed the way that I want it. Now, let's go ahead and figure out what kind of clothes we got from those warehouse runs. So I got Epic and Rare. I should have two Epics and two Rares. Epic and Rare, there we go. All right. It's been a long time since I've opened some clothes. All right, so let's do, obviously, the Rare ones first. <gasps> I need cotton. I totally forgot you need cotton for this stuff. I thought I had cotton. Where did I use all my cotton on? I really thought I had some cotton. Wait, maybe I do have some cotton, but like up here or something. Really? Did I use the cotton? All right, well, we can go find some cotton. Oh, now I can uh, use number six to close it. We can go find some cotton and we can also use this to test out how leggy does the vehicle feel. Right now, I'm at 40 frames. Oh, 25, 20 frames. Okay, 18 frames. This is not getting better. This is really not getting better. I don't know, guys. I do not know if this is gonna be worth it. Oh, look at that. We got a cotton area right here. How convenient. Hopefully there's no uh, farm bots in it. All right, now I got all my frames back. So I don't know what it is. There's something about driving with that vehicle that uh, it brings the frames down now. I guess the dress bot's probably bouncing around a bit in there on that bearing. All right, I got some cotton, 32 cotton. That's probably not gonna be enough for everything, but we can at least get started on... Oh, I'm an idiot. Wait a minute. There, I do have cotton inside here. Oh, it was on this, uh, this chest in the bottom right. And for some reason, I forgot I need the cotton on me, not in the craft bot. It's been a long time since I needed materials on me and not in the craft bot. All right, 30 seconds. So while that happens, I'll get some more paint flowers and open up this loot chest. What do you got for me? Orange fuel component kit. That was actually a decent, that was a decent, uh, loot chest. All right, it is ready. Let's go ahead and unbox. What do we got? Golf pants. Okay, we got some golf pants. Let's put this one in there. I think we unlocked some of the other golf stuff in the, uh, the previous run through. All right, the next one is open and it is... Ooh, painter backpack. That's actually kind of cool. All right, let's get this next one going. All right, let's check out these things. So we got, uh, for a backpack, we got the painter backpack, which is, it's all right. It's not bad. I, I just, I, I don't think I'm ever going to trade the applicator backpack. It was my first, one of my first epic things that I unlocked. And uh, it just, it's just so out there that you have to have it. All right, so then for legs, we got the golf pants. Yeah, though this is definitely not the outfit for that. But I do think, yeah, we also have the golf jacket as well. And do we have golf gloves? Oh, we have lumberjack gloves, but not golf gloves. All right, well, we have another epic one. Are we ready? Here we go. In three, two, one, epic. Farmer pants? Really? Are farmer pants that epic? I guess if you want to be like the farmer, let's check them out. Farmer pants. There we go. Are these the same thing that the uh, that the trader's wearing? This looks really weird with these shoes. What shoes? Do we have farmer shoes? Oh, there we I guess we do have farmer shoes. Do we have a farmer jacket? Oh, we got lumber. Oh, no, that's lumberjack jacket. Lumber jacket. I don't I don't think we have a farmer jacket. All right, well, I'm gonna stick with the technician stuff right now. Technician stuff is pretty cool. All right, now we got our final unboxing here of another epic garment box, and it is a farmer hat. We just like got the whole farmer get up minus the gloves, it looks like. Let's check out the farmer hat. Look at that. All right, so farmer hat. Is there a farmer backpack? Well, if there is, I don't have it. But yeah, we also, we don't have the farmer torso either. Wait, wait, farm hand jacket? Is that, is there a difference between farm hand and farmer outfits? Is there a whole, like, is there a farm hand pants? Oh, and we got farm hand gloves. These are farm hand. Yeah, there must be a difference between farm hand and farmer. Do we have a, do I have a farm hand pants? Oh, here we go, farm hand pants. Do I have farm hand shoes? These are the farm, I have a whole, I just realized I have the entire farm hand outfit, except for a backpack, I think. Yeah, so this is what a farm hand looks like, apparently, minus the backpack. All right, but let's get our technician stuff back on because uh, it just looks better. 
Okay, now I'm dying. Let's not die. All right, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a deployable dress bot. Should we keep it? Should we not keep it? The, the frames are okay when we're stationary, but whenever we're driving around, they, uh, they drop down to about 20 frames. So let me know what you guys think. Is it worth it or is it not worth it? I'll be looking down in those comments below. Let me know what you want to see in the future of this series. Any other side quests you want to suggest for the videos? If you guys enjoyed this, you might enjoy some more stuff on the channel that you can check out on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.